Hello everyone, welcome back in this new video. So for me, KDE has been less buggy than GNOME, and I'm going to show you exactly why. So as you can see here, I'm using Bitwig and I'm using Ubuntu 24.10. And look at this, whenever I try to full screen Bitwig, instead of full screening automatically, the Bitwig window becomes smaller, and then I have to press F11 again to quote unquote unmaximize it so it becomes normal like before and then I can press F11 again to maximize it again and then it will actually maximize. So you can clearly see the bug here. Whilst here I'm on KDE Plasma, of course as you can see, I can just click F11 and boom, the window is maximized. Like it's clean, I can do it how many times I want, it will always, always maximize. And so yeah, this is one bug that I have on GNOME, which is annoying. It's not a deal breaker, but it is annoying and KDE wins because it doesn't have this bug. I can just maximize it easily, as you can see, like it should be. And another bug that I have on GNOME that I don't have on KDE is this one. It's with Minecraft. I want to give you an epilepsy warning. Basically, when I want to maximize Minecraft and unmaximize it, each time I maximize and unmaximize the window of Minecraft, it changes the size. And, and sometimes I also get a black bar here on GNOME and eventually it becomes so tiny that it's just a title bar, there's not even the game anymore. And of course this issue is not happening on KDE. So here I am, I'm on KDE, I'm on Minecraft, same version as before. Look, I can maximize it and I cannot maximize it. And uh, the window size and position doesn't change and it's working like it should work it shouldn't change size the window should not change size when i maximize it it should not have a black bar when i unmaximize it it's just working the way it is intended to work and also i want you to notice a small touch because here on kde uh, the taskbar actually shows the icon of the application in this case minecraft uh, and, and also DaVinci Resolve, because on GNOME both DaVinci Resolve and Minecraft do not have an icon. As you can see here, they have this gear icon, but they don't show their true icon, which is weird. And this is a little detail, but I actually like that KDE is showing the icon of the program I'm using, unlike GNOME, which just shows this gear icon for whatever reason. And I also want to talk about the fact that recently in the latest versions of KDE, I don't really have any issue and I'm really, really happy with how KDE is being developed. I think GNOME by default is prettier than KDE, but I prefer using KDE because for me, I have an NVIDIA GPU, I use Wayland. For me, KDE has been way more stable than GNOME. That's, that's it, that's my truth. Your experience may differ but at least with the latest version of KDE from 6.3 and onwards up to what we have right now, which is uh, KDE 6.4.4, the experience with KDE and the NVIDIA drivers has been basically flawless. Like, I, don't, I have not had any KWIN crash anymore because like on KDE 6.2, every hour KWIN will crash. Now I, I have basically no crashes anymore. Like, literally, I have no crashes related to KDE Plasma anymore. And the experience has been very modern, it's been very, very stable. I love the fact that now we have this uh, screenshotting tool, which works absolutely amazingly. I absolutely love this. And for me, KDE has just been better than GNOME. And the only little issue I've had with KDE recently is this bug, which I've already reported and it's already been fixed in KDE 6.5 and it's probably being backported to KDE 6.4.52. And this is the bug that I had. As you can see, look at my mouse cursor, it's here. If I move the mouse cursor from the bottom to the top, look, the icon is not getting uh, uh, highlighted, okay? Here it is getting highlighted, but in the desktop icons that have two lines of text, as you can see, if I move it slowly from the bottom, the highlight doesn't, uh, doesn't start. Here it does, because these icons only have one line of text, but here, which has two lines of text, as you can see, it's not getting highlighted. And the good thing is that I've reported the issue to the KDE Bugzilla, and the amazing thing is that the KDE team actually responds to the bug that you sent to them. 
Everybody has different experiences on the various kit labs or bugzillas. I have reported a couple of bugs to GNOME in the past, and they've pretty much been all ignored, and none of them has gotten fixed. Whilst on the KDE side, I've reported many bugs in, in this year, and they've all been fixed. Every single one of them has been fixed, and they actually respond pretty fast. And I've also asked a couple of feature requests, and most of them have been implemented already. So yeah, my experience with the KDE developers has been absolutely amazing, while my experience with the GNOME developers in the GNOME GitLab has been pretty bad because they have never said anything about the bugs that I've reported. Now, of course, this is very subjective. Maybe you have a better experience with the GNOME GitLab, but for me, it's been a pretty bad experience because they've just ignored me, whilst the KDE developers have not only cared about my bugs, but they have actually fixed it because the KDE developers actually listen to what the community wants and they actually listen to the bug reports. They don't just ignore them because they don't have them. They listen to the bug reports that people make to KDE, they try to reproduce them and they fix them. That's it. And the last thing that I want to say is that I'm also tired of using buggy GNOME extensions that may or may not get maintained anymore. Because for example, think about the Blur My Shell extension. That extension is pretty much unmaintained at this point. The maintainer has not been active since months by now, so it will not have GNOME 49 support. Uh, you have to manually patch it yourself, which is not hard to do, but it is something that you have to do if you want to have GNOME with Blur in its interface. And also think about the desktop icons extensions, they're all pretty buggy and I'm just tired of it. I really like the way KDE works because it offers the features that everybody wants. And if you don't like a certain feature, you can just not use it. Like uh, desktop icons, KDE has them. If you don't like them, you're not going to use them. But uh, there's not a bottleneck, okay? Because GNOME has a bottleneck which doesn't have all the features that all the desktop environments from the most popular operating systems in the world, which are Windows and Mac OS, have. They offer less features, and so when people transition to Linux and they use uh, GNOME, they don't have desktop icons, they don't have a dock, and they ask themselves, oh, why I don't have this? And some people just don't want to learn a new workflow. That's, that's really about it. And KDE gives you all the options if you want to keep your same workflow, and if you want to have a workflow that is more similar to GNOME, you can very easily customize it to have a GNOME type workflow. And so yeah, I'm just tired of using GNOME and its buggy extension system. And KDE just gives me what I want. So I'm going to keep using KDE up until Cosmic releases and then I'm going to see if Cosmic is going to be good enough to be a KDE replacement or even better than KDE. So yeah, this is pretty much it for today's video. I just wanted to share my experience between KDE and GNOME recently. I'd like to know your experience with these two desktop environments, so if you want, please leave it in the comments of the video. I would really appreciate it. And if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe because it really helps the channel grow a lot. I'm going to see you in the next Linux video. Have an amazing day.